Welcome back. Weeds are a farmer's greatest enemy. This is because they compete with a crop and if they take charge, crops end up withering due to fewer nutrients gathered. On a food farm, weeds are present and if a farmer cannot differentiate a weed and a crop, they end up infecting an animal. For example, the Datura weed is a poisonous weed and it might blend in with the Lusan fodder, thus killing an animal during feeding. Samuel expounds on the remedies that a farmer can use to manage weeds on their farms to moderate risking your animal. I believe most of the farmers that you're talking about, they are a bit experienced, they are not telephone farmers. But for telephone farmers, they are herbicides that will wipe the weeds and then they are going to leave the fodder on the farm. So they are still management, weed management that uh, we are able to practice on fodder. You don't have to weed. And sometimes we are forced to pick. Many dairy farmers are grappling with feeding their animals, particularly on protein feeds that are usually the most expensive feed type. A farmer might easily be tempted to reduce protein feeds in a dairy animal's ration to keep production's cost low. Desmodium is a trailing or climbing perennial legume with small leaves and deep roots which in favorable conditions forms a very dense ground cover. This fodder crop is of high quality protein rich forage. It can be grown between or under other crops as it fixes nitrogen, it increases yields and reduces the need for nitrogen fertilizer. Desmodium is a, is a, is a proteinous fodder that has a, a protein of about 15 to 25. This will depend on the stages. Actually, at this stage that you can see, just, just about flowering, it has about 23 to 25 crude protein, that we call it as CP percentage. And uh, the digestible fiber is between 56 to 76. This is very nutritious. But again, at this stage, there's a lot of water content. The DM, the dry matter, is quite low. So what you do, when you harvest at this stage, you will cut and wilt. After wilting, you lose about 25% of the water. That's, that's why increasing the DM, the dry matter concept, con content, which is very important, so that the cow can eat enough. When the fodder has a lot of water, the cow does not feed enough because basically you're forcing water into the room. But when you let it wilt, you get to feed enough fodder. At this stage, we can also fertilize with NPK. NPK is, um, you can use 23, 23 or 17, 17, 17. For Desmodium, we don't use nitrogenous fertilizer because by itself, it is, it is able to convert the nitrogen that is on the air to the soil because it's a, it's a legume by itself. Well, to get enough of Desmodium, Desmodium can be intercropped by several crops, like in this place, you can see it, is, it has merged well with grass, but it should be tufted grass. What I mean by tufted grass is standing grass that can support itself. So here you can pick, there is what we call nandi, nandi grass is what has mixed with the desmodium. Well, somewhere here, at this stage, there is this color you see, the paling. That tells you there is a phosphorus has a deficiency. The reason why there's a deficiency in phosphorus, it's because you are using the dairy, the dairy cow manure. Dairy cow manure is not sufficient with the minerals. The reason why, when the fodder gets into the cow's rumen, it squeezes all the minerals and the vitamins to formulate milk and also for self-sustaining and then for reproductive system. So, the manure we are using is not very rich. That's why I say when you're using manure from a dairy cow, you need to supplement with fertilizer. It's very important because the nutrition value you see for desmodium will be transferred back into the animal again. So if it is not well fed, 
the feeding regime of Desmodium is not well managed on the farm, then what you're offering the cow is roughage. Definitely it's, it's for feel-good effect. It's not for nutrition purposes. And that's where most farmers go wrong. They assume Desmodium is natural. But assuming this Desmodium will be here for the next four years, how much minerals is it depleting from the soil without reversing back? That's the biggest question you should ask us. The first year you'll find the desmodium doing very good. The next year, the production goes down. The third year, it can even uproot itself, simply because it's feeding on nothing. So, when you want to have a pure stand of desmodium, you need to think about nutrition value or feeding regime of desmodium. Desmodium is best for dairy goats, calves, and uh, newly calved um, high producers dairy. Because it will also cut the cost of dairy milk concentrates. I hear most farmers are crying a lot about the dairy milk expenses and all that. Desmodium can be a solution because one kg of dry desmodium will stand for one kg and a half of concentrate. So you can see, it is cheaper to maintain a desmodium rather than buy the concentrate from the shop. Number two, the concentrate you buy from the shop, you don't know the ingredient inside, the nutrition value inside. You're only told, how sure are you what you buy is what you want. But when you grow your own fodder, you are able to get exactly what you want from the plant. Uh, well, um, when you're planting desmodium, there are two ways of establishment. You can use seed, which a bit is very technical for people who are very new to it, because you need to bury it two millimeters depth in the soil. Uh, when you are do, when you are not able to do seeds, because also the, the the rain intensity will also matter. If the rain is not enough, germination will always be poor, and then establishing that weak new plant you need a lot of irrigation and most parts of kenya we don't have irrigation water we only, we only we only have domestic water so it's good you use um, the rain water to make it cheaper so uh, if you're not able to do seeds then you can do they're called splits splits you just find an established an established um crop like this and you split it. Where there is this root, that's what we call a split. This one now can be a split. You also have this one, and also you can get another one from the same. So out of small thing, you can get like three splits. So it's easier this way because they have the roots already. It's about now attaching themselves into the soil and then propagating. Those are the two ways of establishing a desmodium. When you want to, uh, the spacing is very important for desmodium so that you don't have overpopulation because overpopulation now brings about uh, poor nutrition value for the final fodder. So the, uh, the, the, the spacing should be uh, one foot by one because you want to establish something like this where there is no space left and then now the splits can colonize. The remaining parts. Actually, when the splits now germinate, this this shoot will bend. After it touches the soil, at this node, the roots will de uh, develop, and then now it will begin attaching itself until it is well now covered. That's why we are talking about a well feeding regime for this module. After intercrop with the napier, I, I talked about feeding regime should be intense. For example, if you look, this, this is an apia stand in the middle of desmodium. So, um, the roots of the napier can go far in search for food and water. Because now the minerals has been drawn away by the napier. Lack of minerals has caused depletes of the desmodium. And also the color of the smodium that we have around this this napier has changed its color that means when you see the yellow 
this yellowing, the nutrition value is down. We have less phosphorus because of this yellowing. Yellowing, we have less protein, that is nitrogen, that's why we don't have the green color of it. Unlike the patch there, which is beautiful and young and appetizing. So when you intercrop Desmodium, feeding should be on check. Here in the na Desmodium, ambalo ni bado ni ini Desmodium ambayo sasa imefikia kiwango cha kukata na kuweka kwenye gala. Lakini wakati unaweka kwenye gala lazima unakausha kwenye jua kama siku moja mbili. Ndiyo tuweze kufika kile kiwango cha maji kinachohitajika ndio siweze kuharibika. Uh, wakati imefika wakati wa kutoa maua kidogo unaona maua yake ni kama asilimia 30. Na hii sasa ndiyo ile inakuwa bora sana kwa ngombe wa maziwa, mbuzi wa maziwa ama ngombe wa nyama. Ikipita hapa inaanza kumea mbegu. Kwa sababu kama kwa mfano hapa ishaanza kutengeneza mbegu kwa hii. Sasa ikipita hiki wango sasa inakuwa ni mbegu na ile manufaa yake ama ubora wake wa walishe unapungua na unakuwa ni kama haisaidi ngombe sana inakuwa ni ile ya kujaza tutumbo na soka siku nyingine. Desmodium can be grown as pure stand or as a mixture with the napier grass in cut and carry plots. It can also be grown under a maize crop or even as a cover crop under bananas or coffee. Desmodium seed is relatively expensive and therefore it can be established from cutting. A farmer can get cuttings from an established nursery or from desmodium in the field. The best time to plant the desmodium crop is at the offset of rainy seasons. When you do it from the seeds, you will take about 75 days to 90 days. But for the first cutting, we can delay to 120 days. That's approximately of four months. The reason why we delay is to let now the desmodium flower, develop seeds, and then they drop on the ground. So they will now assist on the next regrowth because we need as much cover as possible. Number two, why we, we delay cutting? It's we want now the stem to have matured enough to be able to reshoot again. When you cut a young, a young shoot, uh, reshoot becomes a problem because the node is not, I mean, strong enough to regrow again. So by seeds, we delay a bit because when you're doing seed because they are very ex expensive, you will do it in a, in a larger species. But when you're doing splits, you can cut within three months, that is 90 days, and you're able to achieve um, the desmodium that you can add into the silage. Desimod desmodium itself can be silaged, but it's, it's a bit tricky to silage desmodium because of what you call buffering. When the pH goes low, the acidity comes high, and the cows can reject simply because the desmodium does not have sugars that assist in lactic acid that is meant for fermentation. So it is either you combine it with napier or maize or any other grass and then add molasses or now you can do it as a pure silage but that needs a bit of training so that you don't lose your order through preservation. Desmodium does not love a waterlogged soil um, needs a, a moderate soil whereby the, um, it is water retention is, is, is an average. It's not too holding and it's not losing. So any sadi, sadi soil cannot be very good for desmodium or clay soil. But if you have anything to do with loam, sandy, loam, clay or loam by itself, it's easy. Like this one, this one is clay loam because it's sunny. It is loose, yes, but it is dark, almost like clay. This is actually the best soil for this model. That's why you can see the, the, the regrowth is a bit attractive. Well, this model is a bit uh, drought resistant, but 
at early stages it requires a lot of water that's all at the beginning of this talk i said you need to to know your rain pattern utilize the rain when you're establishing this modium it will be a bit easier and cheaper but you can do it under irrigation for those uh, established farmers who have the resources but basically this modium will love if you irrigate the more you cut and that means when you irrigate the feeding regime should be duplicated because there's what we call nutrient leaching by water. Desmodium does not have a lot of pests, neither diseases. It is a bit resistant to that, unlike Lucerne. So if you're looking for a cheap uh, protein fodder, you can think of desmodium because it hasn't it doesn't have a lot of pests attack or diseases attack and its management it's very easy and cheap to keep to there are numerous varieties of desmodium but the two most common are the green leafed and the silver leafed ones the green leaf desmodium has leaves with reddish brown to purplish spots on the upper surface of the leaves and reddish brown stems Silver leaf desmodium has stems and leaves covered in dense hairs which make them stick to hands and clothing. It has green and white leaves which are light green underneath. Well, uh, there are several types of desmodium, around uh, seven, but there are three common ones that are found in Kirinyaga. We have this desmodium. How do I know this? Is a commercial desmodium. Inside these leaves, there are a dark brown dot. Same to this leaf, leaf and also this one. That's how you, you distinguish the difference between this desmodium and the other. The other one has a white patch between the leaves and does not have these brown spots. The other one is a dark leaf which has no spot and it is not white spotted. This is another, uh, another type of desmodium. If you look at the inner, inner side of the leaf, it is plain. It doesn't have any spot but plain. How do I identify this as a desmodium? This a climbing end that will qualify this to a desmodium. Another thing that you will clarify this as desmodium, it has three leaflets on one leaf. Same as this, which has three, but now the difference is the dark spots inside the leaf. What is the best time for harvesting desmodium and how does a farmer know that the crop is ready to be cut? If you see like 30% um, of the desmodium has begun to flower, that's the best stage. So you can cut it and allow regrowth again. But after now cutting, you can add the NPK plus the manure. But the manure that we're talking about is a well decomposed manure that is ready to release the nutrients. The reason why we advocate for both Manure is a slow release nutrients fertilizer. But inorganic fertilizer is a quick release nutrients, but short term. So if you merge the two, you're able to maintain your crop and have a better fodder production throughout the year. When you come to the shamba and you want to cut the smodium, you need to mind. You just cut above the soil, like two centimeters, no two inches to four inches. This will allow the reshoot again, which I'm going just to demonstrate over here. Now you cut and then you make sure your hand is well pressed, that you don't choke your fingers. Well, and uh, you're done. Okay. Now, there are reasons why I'm not cutting from the ground. If you look closely here, there's a reshoot. This one. 
this is the next generation. There is another one which is just about to shoot here, which is the next generation. If I did cut from the ground, I would have cut that plus the roots. Now I miss the next generation. That's why I was cutting just above the ground. Yes, it can survive for 8 seasons to 10 seasons, if well managed. Now after I have cut like this, I need to fertilize them. The best process is, I put the manure, spread it well, and then I put now the NPK. That will allow much of leaf generation. And the next season I have a lot of water. Number two, the manure will act as mochi. So I will be able to preserve a lot of moisture from the soil. We are taking a commercial break. We will be right back with more on wilting and fodder trees such as Kaliandra and Cassava.